information, more at 15 hands he is a compact horse whose muscles seem to bunch up in his neck and shoulders, but rather in terms of performance. Up till then, Nero had lost only twice, once because he fell down and once because he threw a shoe. His 14 other starts had resulted in effortless, awe-inspiring victories. Indeed, it appeared that under normal circumstances, Nero might be unbeatable. His secret? Well, there were many theories, but Nero's trainer, Jim Crane, traced the Colt's greatness to his faultless execution of that which is basic to all harness horses. Gait, his way of going, the way of handling himself. He has a tremendously long, easy stride and very relaxed and uh, almost a flawless handling of the gait that he has. And I think this is the easiest enough gait is his big attribute. If Nero wasn't yet a super horse, he was at least a superstar. His stall inevitably was marked by a portable sentry box inside which sat a young man charged with keeping away the crowds so that the colt could get his required 14-hour-a-day nap. As a result, Nero, the racehorse, remained a naive, sweet-tempered soul who jumped playfully over shadows, a habit that could be cured only partially by an elaborate headdress of brushes, tinted glass, and electrical tape meant to restrict his too powerful vision. Yes, Nero had all the trappings of a champion, including worthy opponents. Fourteen of them showed up on Adios Day, forcing officials to split the race into divisions. In the first, driver Joe O'Brien had Nero on the lead as the field entered the home stretch. Nero by a length, and Shirley Ho is coming at him. Nero and Shirley Ho is coming. Nero and Shirley Ho, it's Nero. The first five finishers in that swift 158 and three-fifths mile would come back later that afternoon for the final. The three quarters in one twenty-eight and two fifths. The second division held on the whole a tougher bunch, including Butter Baron, Brett's Champ, Bobo Arrow, and Albert Starr, the Canadian invader. As they come into the head of the lane, Butter Baron and Bobo Arrow is coming on the outside. And here they come by wire. Butter Baron and Bobo Arrow closing. Butter Baron and Bobo Arrow. As expected, Lou Williams got Butter Baron home. But the fierce competition resulted in a new state standard of 157 and two fifths. Now it was time for the horses to cool out, for the drivers to ponder new and better strategies, and for the record breaking crowd to select an ultimate winner. What do you like in the adios? Oh, I have to go with Nero. Definitely Nero. Nero. I would have to say Nero. Mr. Lee is a super horse, and I like the driver. Nero. I like Water Baron. Water Baron. I think Nero. Deciding heat of the adios, Bill Houghton took Brett's champ to the top, then gave way to the seemingly uncontainable What a Baron. At last, as the field rounded the final turn, O'Brien eased Nero out from along the rail. Baron and Nero! Shouts of joy in the Nero camp, which included owners René Derbez, Jack Masso, and representatives of the Stoner Creek Stud, but there were quiet doubts, too. Nero hadn't looked as sharp as he had in the Cane Pace or Battle of the Brandywine. Never before did O'Brien have to shake the lines so, or resort with such frequency to the whip. The adios 